Addie Shaney and here's what's trending. Atherton staff members are set to get the vaccine for COVID-19. The district has released the schedule for JCPS high schools and Atherton teachers and fa other faculty members who want the shot are supposed to go to Broadbent Arena this coming Wednesday at 10 o'clock. This is round one of the vaccine. Teachers will return in three weeks for the booster shot. JCPS teachers started receiving the COVID-19 vaccine on January 22nd. It will take until at least mid-March to have all JCPS staff vaccinated. The board is set to meet on Tuesday evening for its next meeting and the plan to return to school will be once again discussed. In other news, the Atherton Quick Recall team finished its first ever virtual Governor's Cup competition and won first place as a team. Atherton also won several individual competitions. Noah Calhoun won second place in math, Calvin Schweitzer came in third, and Tin Lee came in fifth place. In science, Noah Calhoun took first place and Charlie Lowy finished in fifth. Charlie Lowy also won first place in social studies while Benjamin Colvin took second place. In language arts, Calvin Schweitzer won second place and Grace Sanders finished in fourth. Benjamin Coleman also won fourth place in arts and humanities while Meg Ross won third in written composition. The quick recall team now moves on to regionals on February 13th. Special congratulations are once again in order for cross country standout Rosemary Peters. As you may remember, she shattered Atherton's ancient record time last fall. This week, she was recognized by the Career Journal as part of the Kentuckiana High School Sports Awards. Congrats again to Rosemary Peters and Coach Withers. Attention all Atherton entrepreneurs. Did you know that Atherton has a brand new business club that could help you start and run your own small business? Sophia Schindler and Molly Faley have all the details. Have you ever been interested in creating your own small business or just learning more about business in general? Atherton actually has a brand new business club focusing on just that. Indigo Smallwood, a junior at Atherton High School, was the person who created this club. We decided to interview her to find out more about it, as well as highlighting Indigo's own small business, which she created about four months ago. I decided to create business club because uh, over quarantine, I um realized that i had a passion for business and i loved owning my own business which i created over quarantine and i realized that a lot of people my age had also um developed this love slash wanting to be involved in a business um and i realized that we didn't have a club for it already and i figured it's a good club to have it looks good on resumes and um, it's a nice place for people who are interested in business to get together and talk about it. Um, in Business Club, we talk about um, uh, different aspects of owning a business or managing a business. And um, also, we talk about things to get you started in owning your own business um, to help you out. Um, I uh, created my own business over quarantine called Around Lips, um, which I made four months ago. And there's lots of up and ups and downs in owning a small business, but nothing can replace the feeling when somebody orders from your store because somebody is supporting your dream and the hours you have put into making your products. And it makes it all worth it in the end. Thank you to Indigo for sharing that information with us. If you are interested in joining the business club, please email Indigo at the email on your screen. We hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for watching. For Atherton On Air, I'm Molly Faley. The Atherton Beta Club is making plans to host an online trivia night. Here is Abby Leach to explain. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Abigail Leach and I'm one of the officers for Atherton's chapter of the National Beta Club. So I'm here today to let you know that Beta is holding a trivia night um, for the entire school. Everybody's welcome. The trivia night's going to be hosted on February 11th from 2.45 to 3.45 and it will be virtually of course and we will be doing the trivia over the platform of Zoom. Um, but the time could change depending on what's going on. So just make sure you follow the Atherton Beta Club Instagram or just kind of talk to the, your peers and you'll be able to um, hear about that time change. Um, there's going to be a Google form that's going to be pasted in the description like below me. Um, and that Google form is imperative for you to fill out by February 3rd. This is going to allow us to get yourself and your team together. Teams are going to be comprised of two to six students. Um, and if you only have, if you have less than six students, there's an option on the form to be paired maybe with another team that's just two. So you can have more brains together for the trivia night. Um, 
so you're going to want to put your name in this form. You're going to want to put your team name. That's imperative too, because when we create the breakout rooms on Zoom, we want to make sure that we can distinguish the teams. And then um, just your email so we can get in touch with you. Um, and then you'll uh, put yourself and all of your team members' names. Um, just make sure you fill out that form, like I said, by February 3rd. And we will send the link out to you all closer to the time. Um, we'll probably, we're going to send that link to the individuals on um, whose email they paste on the form. And then we'll also send it through announcements through Atherton as well. So um, just wanted to let you all know about this. This is open to all Atherton students, parents, teachers, staff, and any even students who are a part of JCPS who may not go to Atherton. So anybody that you know, friends, family, you can create on your team just as long as it's not uh, bigger than six people. And we can't wait to see you at Trivia Night. Most students haven't had a chance to meet their teachers face to face this year, but that doesn't mean that there's a lack of connection. Here's what a few Atherton students wanted to share about their teachers during NTI. Hi, it's Emily Salcedo, and NIT has been rough and stressful. However, when you're introduced to thoughtful teachers, you feel more welcomed. To Ms. Gimble and Ms. Woolley, I want to thank the most. I'm not really well when it comes to math. However, both teachers have been very encouraging and patient with me and everyone around me as well. Whether getting an answer wrong, they help you get to the finish line. You have made me feel more welcome to a subject that I've disliked my entire life, and I want to thank you very much for that. I just wanted to show some appreciation to my chemistry teacher, Mr. Gregory. Um, he's always very understanding and positive. He always makes me smile in class. Um, I've been struggling a lot with getting myself up out of bed and getting motivation, and just getting up feels like very mentally tiring, and it's like running a mental marathon every morning, and and I've been struggling to fall asleep at night and it's just made going to my classes really difficult which has resulted in me sleeping through classes or just not going because it makes me feel like sick and tired to just get up and go. But when I do join his class, um, he welcomes me with open arms and he doesn't make me feel guilty or um, make me feel upset that I wasn't going or you know, I never feel like he's angry about it. He just welcomes me with open arms and it makes me feel really good and just makes my day a whole lot easier. And in class, he's always very positive and understanding and he never fails to make me and other students smile. So I just wanted to show some appreciation to him. It's time to recognize students in the Engineering Academy at Atherton. The engineering teachers are here now with their students of the month. Good morning, Atherton High School. Uh, this is Mr. Williams for the Engineering Academy. I would like to announce my student of the month for aerospace engineering, and that is Sarah Montoyo Obando. Uh, Sarah is a natural leader. She's shown that time and time again. She's very gifted at digesting a lot of the complex technical material that we deal with, uh, demonstrates that on a regular basis. Uh, Probably her greatest strength is her ability to make her teammates better uh, when working on team projects. I uh, really appreciate that about her. And I have met few students that are as passionate about aerospace as Sarah is. So once again, she's a pleasure to have in class. And congratulations, Sarah, for being our Aerospace Engineering Student of the Month. Uh, I would like to announce my Student of the Month for the Aviation Maintenance Pathway, and that student is Leo Osborne. Um, Leo is uh, very gifted in his natural curiosity of how things work. Uh, that makes him uh, a great student in this area. Uh, he has shown time and time again his abilities in team building and his leadership skills in those areas. And this year especially, he's really demonstrated his leadership abilities and team projects and finally uh, <clears throat> his greatest strength i believe is his ability to look at a problem objectively and come up with the appropriate solutions and communicate those to his team members to find an effective solution for those problems so again congratulations leo it's great to have you in class i would like to nominate luke jesorski for the engineering student of the month for December, um, to name a few of his qualities. Uh, of course, his uh, hard work and uh, 
uh, productivity in class and good quality of his work, but also just for helping build a very positive community in class and being helpful to other students and always generous with his contributions. Uh, he's a model student and I'm so happy to have him in the class. Thank you. And let's not forget about our ninth graders. Ms. Vogt is here with Freshman of the Week. Good morning, Atherton staff and students. This is Ms. Vogt coming to you from the Freshman Academy to celebrate this week's Student of the Week, Audra Barbieri. Audra is an absolutely phenomenal student. She uses her voice and her writing to truly promote positive change. And I can't wait to see who she becomes one day um, because she's already amazing. She recently wrote a poem in class in which she used such beautiful imagery and figurative language to truly capture her um, message about the American dream and what that means to her. She's also been wonderful during Socratic seminar, being quite the leader in class. She not only shares her own ideas, but she responds to her peers and acknowledges what they have to say as well and really lets them know that she hears them and that she is paying attention. And so um, I just think that she really deserves to be student of the week. And I'm very proud to have you in class, Audra. And I can't wait to see what great things you do throughout the rest of the year. Congratulations. Media arts teacher Miss MacArthur would also like to commend Audra as well for her awesome work in media arts. Miss MacArthur says Audra's eye for photography and video is incredible. You can see some of her photos on your screen. And we also want to share a few minutes of a recent video that Audra created. Let's take a look. Congrats to Audra. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of your work in media arts in the future. Okay, let's get serious here for a minute. I have a tough question for you, and I know nobody's thrilled about how divided we are as a nation, but you're going to have to pick a side. Cats or dogs? Elizabeth McCarty tried to find out where Atherton students stand on this issue. After being stuck at home for nearly 10 months, a lot of us have become even closer companions with our furry friends. And it's no secret that people have always loved to debate who makes the better pet, cats or dogs. So I've asked a few students what they think. I think that cats are better than dogs because cats are calmer and I feel like around cats I just feel more comfortable and at home. I choose dogs because they look super fun to like walk and my favorite type of dog is a corgi. But I don't know if I'll be able to get one because my mom doesn't like animals, so. Okay, so I would say that I like cats better because I just recently got a dog and she's really, really high maintenance. I would uh, rather have a dog than a cat because um, cats remind me of the devil and I don't really, you know, mess with that. I like cats more than dogs um, because they are low maintenance and independent, but I only like nice cats, cuddly ones. With that, say hello to my dog. Yep. Well, there you have it. It appears that for a lot of us, it depends on whether we want the energy of a dog or the comfort of a cat. 
For At The Channel On Air, I'm Elizabeth McCarty. At The Channel On Air's own music and arts correspondent, Caden Ely, is back with this week reviewing some of his favorite relaxing albums. Hi, I'm Caden Ely for today's music reviews. I found this time to be very stressful during this quarantine, so today I will be reviewing my favorite relaxing albums. The first EP that I would like to share with you is Antiphone by Alphamist. This is one of my favorite jazz albums while leaving traces of hip-hop and soul along the way. The album is 52 minutes long and is worth every second. The first song on the EP, Keep On, is one of my favorites, with its in-depth sampling and smooth melody that pushes it forward. Let's have a listen. The next piece of music I would like to share with you is a beat tape from local musician Danger Waves, also an Atherton graduate. The tape named Colder just released this December with 11 songs on it and every one with beautifully collected samples. This is the second tape released this year by the artist and I'm excited to see more. The last album that I would like to share with you is from the legendary Patti Smith. Per Dam is an adaptation of Rene Dumas' unfinished book Mount Analog, a novel of symbolically authentic non-Euclidean adventures in mountain climbing, featuring Anushka Shankar, Tenzin Kogal, and Charlotte Gainsbourg. The poetic verses of surrealism take all your troubles away as you listen in. I would not speak of the mountain. Its summit must be inaccessible. Media art students have been busy working on their video editing skills, specifically the way pro filmmakers use a variety of shots to tell a story. For a recent project, students were challenged to tell a story with an edited video, but weren't allowed to use any words. We'd like to share some of them with you this month. Here's our first installment, shot and edited by Mary Spagnola.
That's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching and remember, what you do makes a difference.